Hi everyone, my name is Georgi Tinchev and I'm a PhD student at the University of Oxford from the Oxford Robotics Institute. Today I will talk to you about estimating key points in 3D point cloud data with the help of Salians. This work has been done in collaboration with Adrian Penalte Sanchez and my supervisor Morris Fallon. The teaser image you can see here is an illustration of our method extracting key points from LiDAR data of the Oxford Robot Car dataset. Today I will talk to you about key point detection. I'll start by describing what is the problem we're trying to solve and why it's interesting to solve it. I'll mention a couple of recent approaches that deal with the same problem. Then I'll explain in detail what we do to solve it, and I will show some qualitative and quantitative results from our experiments. Finally, I'll offer some discussion as to what can be done next. Let's begin by looking at why extracting key points from point cloud data. Key points are regions of interest in an image or a point cloud. There, there's usually no defined ground truth of what an interesting region is, and it's subjective of how each algorithm defines it. Different algorithms define different pixels or points as key points. It's useful to do so for a few applications like SLAM, where we need to match frames of odometry or loop closure purposes. Similarly, for object pose estimation and we want to track the position of a person or object, it's useful to define key points. Sparse and dense corresponses can be used for image warping, style transfer, and 3D reconstruction of scenes. In all of these areas, the consistent and repeatable extraction of key points is crucial. Next, let's look at some previous work that extract key points from point cloud data. Some of the pioneering work on point clouds comes from 3D FeedNet, where the authors jointly learned key point description and detection directly from point cloud data. Crucially, their feature descriptor is pre-trained initially for two epochs before training the system end-to-end. USAP is a method from the same lab that improves um, 3D FeedNet, and they specifically focus on the key point generation process, and they improve the distribution of the key points. DH3D learns jointly local description, key point score, and global description with the Siamese network. Similarly to 3D FeedNet, they use two-phase training, first the descriptor, then the detector. D3 Feed is an improvement over D2Net in images, where again the descriptor and key point extractor are jointly trained. In contrast to all of these works, SKD only focuses on the key point extraction and does not train the descriptor. In our work, we use the pre-trained descriptor of 3D FeedNet and only focus on the key point extraction task. Arguably, if we train or fine-tune the descriptor, we could achieve even better performance. Now let's look at what's saliency. Saliency defines what is relevant for a specific machine learning model. Previous work has found this useful for key point extraction in images. It looks at the gradient of a neural network to understand how it influences the predictions. For example, the top row of this figure represents the original image, the middle row represents the blurred saliency map, and the bottom row is the saliency map after thresholding. So we ask the question, can something similar be done for point clouds? It turns out it's not that straightforward. Next, I will walk you through the process of extracting saliency information from point clouds. Let's see how the science computation actually works. First, we take an example point cloud, such as this one from the Kitty dataset, and this is a top-down view where the black box shows a zoomed-in area of the wall. We then compute the distance from the median of the point cloud to each point. Here, points close to the center are colored in blue, further away points are colored in red. Third, we compute the initial saliency score that assumes a pre-trained differential descriptor model is available. The saliency is defined as a product of two terms. The first one are the feature activations from a specific layer L of a network given the input point cloud P. The second term is the gradient of that layer L with respect to the input 3D locations of the points in the point cloud P. In subfigure 3, blue corresponds to negative gradients while red to highly positive. Once we have the weighted distance from subfigure 2 and the initial saliency from subfigure 3, we compute the final saliency score. This is simply the multiplication of subfigure 2 and 3 per point j over x, y, and z coordinates. In the equation, r defines the distance of each point to the median. In the fourth subfigure, blue defines a low saliency score, while red, or yellow, defines a high saliency score. Typically, points further away from the median with the positive gradient response are chosen as initial key points. Finally, we process this final final saliency score in subfigure 4 with an MLP and get the key points in the last image that are marked in red. You can notice that some edges and corners that had low score in subfigure 4 are also picked up. This is because the input to the MLP is defined as a combination of the saliency information, context information from a pre-trained network and the original descriptor of the network. I will define exactly how this happens next. This figure will guide you through the process that um, we, that we use to obtain the key points from the input point cloud. We take the input point cloud and a pre-trained feature descriptor 3D FeedNet in our case. We compute the gradients and the silence information as we just described. 
we then extract the contact information from the Intel Point Cloud. This is simply a pre-trained network similar to PointNet that provides additional semantic information. Then we take the input descriptor and process it with the PCA to compute a smaller version of it. We combine the reduced dimensionality descriptor vector with the Point Cloud context information and the silence information to obtain the final concatenated vector. We process the concatenated vector with an MLP phi and get the final logits there. Here there are two options of obtaining the key points. You can either threshold based on the number of key points that you need, as we did in some of our experiments, or select all the key points above certain threshold confidence level. This produces the final set of key points that are, not, that are in red on the original point cloud on the right. For training the MLP we use a simple cross entropy loss with ground truth point cloud alignment. We will now look at some qualitative and quantitative results. We have compared our approach to two state-of-the-art methods, USAP from ICV-19 and 3D FeedNet from ECCV-18. This is a top-down view of a point cloud obtained by a 3D LiDAR scanner from the Oxford Robot Car dataset. We have processed the red point cloud of each method and extracted exactly 1024 key points that are marked in blue. Interestingly, 3D FeedNet seems to be biased towards the density of the point cloud near the middle of the sensor, while USAP chooses a more uniform distribution of the number of key points. You can see that our method does not pick any points from the ground and generates key points concisely clustered around areas that are interesting, like corners, walls, edges, or the structure in general. Now let's look at what happens when we increase the number of extracted key points. Here, in each column, we have extracted a predefined number of key points for each method, from 128 key points to 1024 key points. By increasing the number of key points, we would expect that the new key points would appear in a similar location as the old ones. You can see that our method does not choose the ground to define key points and is not affected by the density of the point cloud. Next, let's look at an example from the Oxford Robot Car dataset that contains even more structure. Here you can see an example of the key points extracted from a point cloud from the Oxford Robot Car dataset. You can see that the key points extracted by SKD are mostly in areas of the window corners or edges. Next, let's look at some quantitative results. We have compared our method quantitatively on two datasets, Kitty on the left and the Oxford Robot Car on the right. On the x-axis is the increased number of extracted key points, while on the y-axis is the relative repeatability of key points. We extract relative repeatability by obtaining the key points from two point clouds, transforming the first point cloud with the ground truth transformation, and counting the overlapping key points below a certain threshold. Repeatability only estimates the key points performance without the descriptor's influence. With the higher number of key points, it's normal to expect that the performance will saturate. The higher the repeatability percentage, the better the performance. Our method, in purple, consistently outperformed previous work. Next, we will look at the metric that, com that compares both the key point extraction and description matching performance. Here, we evaluate the performance of the key point extractor together with the key point detector descriptor. The two graphs are the results on the Kitty dataset on the left and the Oxford Robot Car dataset on the right. The metric that we use is called matchability and is designed by the DefeatNet. It takes two point clouds and extracts k number of key points for each method. We then match the key points using the same descriptor method and record the matches below a certain descriptor distance. Afterwards, we transform the point clouds using the ground truth transformation and count the number of correctly matched key points below a certain distance. On the graphs, the x-axis corresponds to the distance, while the y-axis represents the percentage of correctly matched key points. Key points matched at over 1 meter distance are very, not very useful in general. Next, we took the values at 1 meter distance and computed how they would change if we altered the number of extracted key points. In these two bar charts, you can see the performance of each method on the Kitty dataset on the left and the Oxford Robot Car dataset on the right. Each column shows the four bars uh, for each method at varying number of key points from 128 to 1024 key points. The y axis represents the percentage at 1 meter distance, as explained previously. We will see the performance. Um, we can see that the performance of SKD is not greatly influenced by the varying number of key points. This is likely due to the generating the key points in the same areas. Now let's see how our algorithm performs when actually matching the key points. Here we show the one possible application of our key point detector that is geometric registration. We use Ransack in order to perform the geometric registration. The table represents the results of the Oxford Robot Car and Kitty datasets. In order to be fair to other methods, we use the same 3D FeedNet descriptor for evaluation. RTE and RRE refer to relative translational and rotational errors. Success rate is the number of point clouds for which Ransack was able to find the correct registration. 
The last two columns are the average number of iterations that Ransack took and the inlayer key point ratio. While our method is within standard deviation of other methods when looking at the rotational position errors, it is much quicker to find the correct transformation with a higher number of inliers. This is likely because the key points appear in the same, almost the same locations. Finally, we will look at some ablation studies that we've done. Here we performed ablation studies to see which component of our system contributes the most to the end result. We have chosen the precision of one meter distance as our metric on the y-axis, and we have compared six different methods. In dark blue is the raw final silence information without any training used by the neural network. In yellow, we have added the description information and the context information without training the network. You can see that the saliency in the concatenated vector is responsible for around half of the performance. In red is a method that only trains an MLP based on the saliency information without any context or descriptor. Naturally, there is a jump in performance of red when compared to dark blue due to training an MLP. In purple, we add the descriptor information and get a huge improvement compared to red. This justifies the importance of mixed training um, the key point detector with the original descriptor information. Note that the original information is only used for training. It's not the descriptor is actually not not trained. It's frozen. In green, we add the context information and retrain, which results in small performance improvement. In light blue, we apply TCA to the descriptor and context information, which slightly increases the performance. This is our final model. Finally, here's a qualitative illustration of our algorithm running on sequence 00, zero of the Kitty dataset in comparison to other state-of-the-art methods. Here I would like to address one crucial shortcoming of our approach. SKD relies on a pre-trained descriptor network in order to extract key points. This is not ideal, especially because we need to compute gradients. An interesting forward direction would be to approximate these gradients or train a teacher-student type of architecture to match the output distribution of the descriptor network with a much smaller and more efficient network. This would drastically speed up the required computational time. Thank you for staying until the end. If you're interested about our work, please get in touch. We'll be happy to discuss it further. Also, if you're interesting, interesting, interested in reading the full paper, please visit the first link. If you're interested in the other work carried out in the Oxford Robotics Institute, please visit the link below. Thanks.